Hello, Professor Bright here. Welcome back to Sunless Skies. I'm sorry, I just noticed some weirdness about this platform and the whole matter of these withered roots, as they called them. Although the material looks... Well, we're not going to worry about that. We are not going to worry about that at all. We're just going to explore Langley Hall. A sprawling house of numberless rooms founded by Lord Langley. It's a refuge for those willing to brave the dark of Eleutheria. Outside it stands the last lamppost, the furthest flung beacon of London light. A jetty off the edge of nowhere. A cottage the size of a cathedral. Mellow candlelight shines through its frosted windows like split treacle. Here the vanished Lord Langley founded a home away from home. A London for the exiled, the lost, and the lovelorn. The distance is suspended inside... No one's ever claimed to have charted the entirety of the Limitless Hall. Intriguing. Enter Langley Hall. All are welcome here, provided they are welcoming of all here. Welcome, Traveler. A man in a faded postal uniform greets you at the end of a battered jetty. Intriguing that the postman made it up here. He carries a shuttered lamp in one hand. It's like the deep amber hue of the last lamp post. Hello, hello. A new guest? This way, please. Let's get you somewhere warm. He produces a set of keys and strides towards the oak-paneled front door of the house. He knocks thrice and then unlocks the door. This way, the sound of laughter spills out. Inside, an endless house party is in full swing. Guests who enter Langley Hall rarely leave. Hmm. The hall... This hall, rather, is the oldest part of Langley's project. From here, staircases wind their ways to other rooms, halls, landings, and wings of the cottage. Guests sit on stairs, sing from the banisters, or promenade along the hall in search of friends. The closest door to the entrance is wide open, revealing a cloakroom the size of a village green. Fires crackle in seven hearths, some would set up a bar. Compile our port report first. Langley Hall is widely considered to be a folly and a fool's paradise. Have those who say such visited? I wonder. Langley Hall is a labyrinth of well-intentioned jollity. Jollity? Yeah. A party's snake from the front door to the back kitchen by way of a thousand bedrooms, bathrooms, billiard rooms, and ballrooms. The wine flows like water, and the hour is always hazily too late. Those that come here rarely leave, and those that do rarely do so for long. They've made a home of Langley Hall, or at least... Langley Hall is made for them a home. And that's the curious thing. It's a house that nobody wants to leave, and we have people who are looking for friends. And I wonder where those friends happen to be. Assign the guest book. Just a little formality, the post officer says apologetically. Don't worry, we don't have many here. He leads you to a little side room, where a buffet replete with dips and breadsticks has been laid out. He produces a huge leather volume from an under a table, and moves some hummus so that you can settle it down. The spine indicates that this is volume 3. Tell us how you'd like to be addressed, whatever you like, who you really are, or who you want to be. Ah, and so should I want, I could change the way I'm addressed. I'm good with just Professor, though. like to keep the title as it is. Langley Hall will accept you all the same. The post officer nods, blots the ink, and closes the book. Very good, Professor. You're welcome here for as long as you care to stay. He shakes your hand. One thing, just a note of caution. If you go exploring, we don't know how far the hall extends. I doubt even Langley does. Continue. Hmm. Explore Langley Hall, a house founded on the outside but inside endless. Langley Hall extends as long as it likes without interference from the laws of measurement, architecture, or probability. How did they block it from the sun's influence, or rather the judgment's influences? Hmm. Oh. Well, first, let's just explore. The byways of Langley Hall. Some floors are littered with rooms like the inside of a beehive. Others contain but a single bedroom. The doors rarely connect one or more rooms at a time. Lord Langley, having apparently preferred his guests get some exercise, we're moving from their bedrooms to the library in search of a nightcap. Hmm. Ah. Langley Hall stretches on for lifetimes. To find anything in the labyrinth, you need to go exploring. Going from floor to floor, or even room to room, one is often confronted with a staircase. These can vary between three and three hundred stairs, 
and there's no guarantee that on descending one, you won't immediately be confronted with one going up. Hmm. Could do, could do. Ah. There's a curious thing. Well, let's, um, I assume this is a fair or reasonable use for one of these charts. An amiable cartographer has made a mission of mapping all Eleutheria. He resides in Langley Hall, where he started his venture. Oh, bad choice. An indulgence of curiosity. Of course, I've not seen the whole thing, but I thought I'd try to see the rest of the region instead. I'm not getting any younger, and that seems a more achievable goal. Though Pyrenees is going to give me some trouble, let me tell you. I'll bet, I'll bet. The smell of champagne rises from below, along with the unmistakable scent of fireworks. Langley Hall stretches on for lifetimes to find anything in the labyrinth you need to go exploring. Footsteps on the staircase below, a horn sound. Guests thunder by, dressed in pinstripe, and devilesses in a golden gown scowls at the stampede. Just because anything goes here doesn't mean that it should. Hmm. Open the kitchen door. Ribaldry can be heard from within. The smell of hot pot wafts tantalizingly toward you. A fine. Your explanations have borne fruit. You found the kitchen. You can practically taste the pepper in the air. Having found the kitchen, you'll always be able to return from the hollowed hallway. Hallowed hallway, we should say. You are assailed with a wave of warmth and the aroma of bacon cooking on the cavernous stove. Seems that the real party is in here. Champagne corks pop. Someone's playing a viol. Cards are slapped onto the wooden table. A dozen flushed faces turn towards you, all beaming. Hmm. Ah, if I was staying a while, but unfortunately, I am not. I talk to the notorious flirt. She disarms would-be suitors with bon mots that stay just on this side of good taste. What's the matter? Verdant eating your brain? You look like you've never seen a woman before. She practically inhales her whiskey. Hmm. Return to the hallway. Maybe we could stay for a little while. Maybe. Inquire after Lord Langley. It's only polite to introduce oneself to the master of the house and the host of this endless party. Hmm. The post officer looks deeply uncomfortable. Not sure I ought to say his lordship's business. It's his party, see? He found the house and wanted guests invited those of us who, for one reason or another, weren't suited for what London had become. New London made him sick to his stomach, he said. Post officer runs a hand through his hair. I won't betray his hospitality, but I'll tell you what I know if you agree to that. If you do find him, you'll respect his wishes. That's what this place is about, respecting each other. You'll respect the intentions of Langley Hall, or you say you will, at any rate. I suppose. The postal officer bites his lower lip. It's the topic of choice here. Where's Langley? Have you seen Langley? He sighs. Anyone who says they know the answer is lying, but if you want a place to start looking, when he was with us, he favored a particular chair in the lounge. An old friend of his is still in the yellow drawing room. He was on good terms with the cook. Considers you for a moment. What if he doesn't want to be found? What if, wherever he is, he doesn't want to come back? Well, that's too bad. I want to find him. Hang up your coat and hat. You plan to be here for a while. A jovial doctor in a taupe waistcoat manages the cloakroom. This way, Professor. Let's see if we have any space left. He uh, guides you to a hat stand nestled between a vast tower of wigs and a row of pinstripe suits. Do let me know if you find anything interesting during your stay, he says so I can avoid stumbling across it. Hmm. Return to the kitchen. Glasses of champagne, pasta and bechamel sauce, car games and hot kettles, the gadflies, all-nighters, and perpetual hangers-on. Yeah, let's see about this game, huh? This game looks complex. Let's have ourselves dealt in. 40% chance of success, and we were lucky. Oh my... There are 214 cars compiled from a variety of decks, so that though there are six aces of bats, each bears a different hue and a different function within the game. You may pair sixes, queens, and fours, but never sevens. An ace held for more than seven rounds can be exchanged for another card, but you may not choose which. The other players muddle through, seemingly as mystified as you are. The dealer is a wizened old man he does not play, but he does arbitrate the rules with extreme vigor. You come out ahead, though you're not sure how. Ah, oh, the game of Mao, I suspect. Well, only the one shot? Ah, no shame. To search for Lord Langley, I need a caged catch. You were told that he was on good terms with the cook. Perhaps she knows where he is now. A donation to the kitchen would probably help you out. 
But I see that I also need hearts to get this done. Hmm. Interesting. Could help with the cooking, though. Except that it requires hearts and supplies. I'm sorry, I didn't want to talk to the flirt. She's terrifying, you see. Return to the hallway, somewhere that doesn't smell of Corget. Uh, we probably shouldn't, but let's explore. Let us see. Embark on an expedition into Langley Hall. You'll need to keep your crew in line. Will be difficult, but we'll try. Mm. Emerging in light, you march your crew as quick as you're able through the long, winding passages of Langley Hall. You ably splunk shattered stairways, crawl through secret passages in the wall, emerge blinking in candlelit bedrooms where all manner of parties are being held. The breaks for enjoyment improve morale and double your speed. Your map expands, and when you return to the hallowed hallway, you find you have supplies left over. Hmm. Oh. An antique grandmother clock on the landing below begins to chime. Its face shows two suns, one bright and the other pale as the moon. Two suns, you say? A curious thing. Enter the little lounge, though. A door yawns open atop the next landing. Inside, candlelit sleep. Your explanations have borne fruit. You found the door to the little lounge. The sound of snoring is quite loud. Hmm. The lamps are low, giving the room a warm amber glow. The wood paneling is dark, the wainscoting is decorated with sleeping cats, a fire, orange as a harvest moon, blazes in the hearth. Guests slumber on their enormous sofas, or else whisper to each other from their armchairs. Wherever you look, there are glasses of mulled wine. And so I wonder, and wonder more. This will cost you a crew member. Why would that be the case? Are they just going to stay here? Hmm. 37% chance of success. We'll give it a shot. Search the Lord Langley's chair. It sits unoccupied, far from the fire. It gathers dust and curious glances. It would be best, were your investigation not scrutinized, you wait for the opportune moment when enough of the guests are drowsing, wine sodden, and languid to creep to the chair. It is a high-backed velvet horror that resembles a bat turned inside out. It creaks downably if you so much as brush against it. It requires a steady hand and limitless concentration to fish around the crevices, you find coinage, crumbs, and dust. The springs are damnable, the patterning lamentable. Finally, your hands hook around... What's this? A map. A map directing you to the study. Attempt to leave. You cannot linger here forever. You make for the door. A few languorous hands extend from various sofas, footstools, and poofs. But you pay them no heed. The door opens with a reluctant creak. The air is colder outside, the lights harsher. Hmm. Oh, oh, oh my. I see. Well, I mean, I'm going to need to look into the study. Hmm. I want to keep this moment of inspiration. Those are useful for destroying terrors, I know that. The unlicensed chart, on the other hand... Well, I can trade that in, no problem. And let me see. You need ten crew, you have nine. That's unfortunate. Hmm. How much would it take? Twenty more. I mean, there's other options, of course, but... Hmm. I will tell you what. Let's go to that study while I remember that we can. Uh, let's see here. No, no, no. Oh, I can't shop. I see. I see. Return to the hallway. You've wandered enough. Recover your coat and hat. The doctor guides you to your effects with admirable efficiency. I always remember where someone leaves their things. I trained for medicine, but this is preferable. It requires the same attention to detail and personal attention, but involves considerably less mess. Everything in its place, nothing ever goes wrong, and it wouldn't matter much if it did. Here you are. Leave Langley Hall for now. It is time. The post officer escorts you to the dock. Not good to go out in the dark alone, prof. He shows you all the way to your engine. He waits on the platform as you make 
ready for departure. Even as the dark swallows rolls in to swallow your engine, the amber light from his lantern lingers. About that, give us one moment. Just... Ah, don't have the capacity for much more. Oh, the debate. Do I want to give up that moment of inspiration? No, but we will. If we need to. Return to Langley Hall. How long has it been since your last visit? Not nearly long enough. The post officer is here to greet you again. I'm so pleased you've returned. This way, please. Everyone will be so glad to see you. He unlocks the oak panel door and a familiar flood of amber light and bright laughter spills out into the cold. Hang up the coat and hat. We'll be here for a little while. Just a bit. It will be fine. Uh, no, no, no. We're going to be exploring. I suppose I could technically grind this, but not the type to do that sort of thing. You know how it is. You march your crew as quick as you are able through the long, winding passages of Langley Hall. You ably splunk shattered stairways, crawl through secret passages in the wall, merge blinking in candlelit bedrooms where all manner of parties are being held. The breaks for enjoyment improve morale and double your speed. Your map expands, and when you are done, you find you've supplies left over. How close are we? How far away? I only have 50. Hmm. Hmm. Perhaps not the best use of this moment of inspiration. In fact, probably the worst. But, a sardonic music hall singer has been here for years. She knows her way around the place and will assist you in exchange for help with a song. Bloody marvelous. You're a bloody wonder you are. I assume that's what that is. She recovers herself. I mean, it's all right. Livens things up the drawing room for sure. Now, have you been this way? Got a pen. Can't find anything in this place for love nor money. She pauses. Well, maybe love. She makes a few adjustments to your map. Knock for admittance to the study. You can hear hushed whispers and the rustle of papers. There's a smell of pipe smoke. Yes, we've located the study where the more cerebral of Lord Langley's guests congregate and share their collected wisdom. And I'm very curious about what that wisdom might be. Oh. You delightful, delightful folk. Hmm. I see. Well, a bevy of academics congregate inside the study where they discourse, dispute, and declaim. Here, Lord Langley has a panoply of curiosities from old London. Skulls without eye sockets, leer from the shelves, incrustations of amber gleam in the lamplight, bottles of fungal wine are stacked on shelves and desks. Disputate, you can argue with the best of them, but I need those visions of heaven, don't I? Or do I? I might not. Hmm. Attempt to rescue, though. Two stately gentlemen appear to be between sips of scotch, crossing a curled-up mammal back and forth. It's not a ball. Ah, a failure. Sad. The pair are only too glad to accommodate your questions about their toy, which is quickly revealed to be a spectacularly well-shaped, well-mannered penguin. But you find yourself mired in their discussion, Drowned out by the reposts, the endless nuances of their arguments. Though you endeavor over and over again to extract yourself from the conversation, it's no use. They insist on your company. It isn't until they've drained their whiskey to the dregs that they allow you to leave. By then, the penguin has gone to sleep and been put away. I'll have to try again in the future. Aw, I want to save that penguin. Look at him. They're adorable. Ah. Oh. Although this... Hmm... A chance to get a condemned experiment. Don't know what I would use it for, though. Hmm. We'll leave it be for now. Um, how do I leave? Thank you, I've had quite enough. Not entirely true, but that does seem to... Well, it seems to allow for some other choices to be made. I wonder. Recover our coat and hat. We'll be leaving soon. We'll be leaving now, in fact. Mm, but maybe not. Ah. So staircase plunking isn't something we consume. It's something that unlocks these options. Which means... I just need 15 more to get 
to the upstairs laundry cupboard, which I don't know why I would want that. Apparently there's giggling coming from within, so someone's having fun. Um, curious. A woman in a velvet gown is remonstrating with a Benthic professor over proposed laws for a new London. She believes in the sovereignty of Parliament, he in the right of kings. Neither pay any attention to you. Why am I not surprised about the Benthics? Actually, wait. Were the Benthics the revolutionaries or not? Eh. Regardless, unimportant at the moment. The yellow-white stuccoed door is shut. There are some formalities to be observed even here. Let me take my coat off again. Sorry, I'm going to be sticking around again. Very indecisive about this, I know, I know. But... I'm curious. Explore again. Knock for admittance to the yellow drawing room. The yellow white stucco door is shut. There are some formalities to be observed, even here. A find. Your explanations have borne fruit. You found the way to the yellow drawing room, where voices drown from within. The room is warmed by a number of candles on silver trays. The flickering light renders the yellow wallpaper the color of melting butter. Volunteers creep about the room, topping up brandy, ironing fresh newspapers, and clearing away spent candles. Ironing newspapers? A few faces glance up as you enter, but none look longer than briefly. If you wish to engage with the occupants, you must work to capture their interest. Introduce them to a new game. Spending one vision of the heavens, but... Could be done, could be done. Oh god, who would ever want this? A moment of inspiration for a gourd of course to nectar? That's a terrible trade. Hmm. Introduce them to a new game, though. You know just the thing. Ah, uh, a valiant defeat. It was all going so well until the retired colonel decided to join the game. He professed innocence, but you know better. No novice would know to deploy a battalion of bishops like that. You are thoroughly trounced. The collection of your wager is swift. Albeit gentlemanly, still you succeed in delighting the gathering. Soon all Langley Hall will be playing the game. Yeah, I think I'm good. Exchange your ministry stamp permit for ministry approved literature. Again, this is a terrible trade. The other way, sure, but that trade is awful. Uh, you've been told the Lord Langley's confidant is in this room. And sadly, we failed to find them. You think you spy your target mournfully decanting brandy, their hands shake, their mustaches quiver. A nervous disposition brought on by the absence of their friend or by the terrible secrets burdened upon them, which they have sworn never to reveal, almost certainly. What follows is an excruciating conversation wherein the person believes you to be no less than the very architect of their misery in London, which has reduced them to such a pitiable state. They spare no detail of the horrors done unto them and pray you look to the state of your very soul. You leave confused, but remonstrated. Try that again. Thank you. A woman stands by herself, smoking a long cigarette. Her eyes are pale yellow, a devilesse. Those eyes, like drowned suns, meet yours across the room. I've heard of you, Professor. You've been asking questions. As it happens, I'm tired of waiting for answers. She opens the watch on her wrist. Inside, not cogs, but a soul, emerald and jaundiced. His, for safekeeping. For safekeeping? Uh, no, don't look at me so. I'm not, nor ever was the type to be his lover. He sighs, perhaps with regret, perhaps pity. He was waiting for someone. He told me he wouldn't remember who he was. He told me he thought he might find him in the laundry. She blows out a puff of smoke. You tell me. Perhaps it will all come in the wash. All come out in the wash, rather. I return to the hallway. Hmm. Explore Langley Hall. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Return to the hallway. Because we're not wandering, we know exactly where we need to go. I think... The study. This may exchange visions of heaven for moments of inspiration. We'll find out, hope for the best. We'll just have to gather more anyway. You argue over the exact dimensions of Langley Hall with a professor of unexpected geography. She contends that although the treachery of distance may be in full effect, the space that was brought together to create the main hall must be finite, for it must have come from somewhere. You posit, however, that were the hall finite, Lord Langley could not have become lost. She counters that although he may have founded Langley Hall, he may not have built it himself. 
Therefore, it was entirely possible that he was surprised in his course. Hmm. Yes, but that's not what we're here for. We'll come back for the pangolin in time, but not today. Leave for now. Continue our explorations, this time using that moment of inspiration. To unlock the last location. Though first, perhaps the solarium? I am curious, after all. A peek inside the upstairs laundry cupboard. It dominates the landing like your aunt at a dinner party. You can hear giggling coming from within, and I'm curious about that. You found the way to the upstairs laundry cupboard, which smells of fresh linen and spilt wine. You pull open the doors and are met with a smell of fresh laundry and spilt wine, voluminous blankets, an impossibility of towels, and an improbable amount of bedding conceal most of the cupboard from view. But from somewhere much further inside, you can hear the unmistakable sound of giggling. Ah, unfortunate that I need moments of inspiration to do this. Hmm. Yes, uh, that is quite unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Uh, I'm gonna need more mirrors, apparently. I thought my stats were so high, and yet, so it seems. Well, seems they're not high enough. Explore Langley Hall one more time, though. Climb up to the solarium. Light, white, and fervent spills from above. A frosted glass door, garlanded with stained roses, stands ahead. A find. Your explorations have borne fruit. You have found the way to the solarium. Bathed in such radiance, all other lights seem anodyne. Though in Langley Hall, it does not look out on anywhere in the Lutheria where sunlight has been extinguished. What is the source of light, then? Is it still just that lamp? Hmm. Ah, unfortunate that. Golden light pours through the glass dome, gilding the faces of the astronomers, aristocrats, and assorted hangers-on who congregate here. The conversation is polite, dignified, plates of sandwiches circulate. Someone's passing around glasses of sparkling wine. Everyone looks out the main window, which faces some distant sun, chained in the imperial sky. Langley's Hall draws some parts of itself from farther afield than others. Interesting. I wonder how they did that. But sadly, we can't stay here any longer. <sighs> Nothing more to unlock. I need a caged catch, and at least, ideally, three or four moments of inspiration before we can go back to this. Well, with any chance of succeeding at finding Lord Langley. Eh, unfortunate, though that may be. Still, got ourselves some tea, got some more profitable opportunities, and we have at least one port where we know where it is. That will be enough for now. For now, thank you for your time. Know the like, comment, and subscribe buttons below. Use them responsibly, and I will see you all soon when we look for yet another port and hopefully other opportunities. But we'll be back here someday, just not today. Goodbye.